Hi, I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Speaking of subscribers, thank you so much <clears throat> for all the new subscribers coming on board. We are um, over the 500 subscriber mark, and the next goal is 1,000 and beyond. Um, so thanks for joining me on my journey, and also a, uh, a shout out to the Norfolk Whiskey Group. And remember, it's just whiskey, folks. Today we are going to be reviewing and talking about a um, signatory cast strength single cask Glen Elgin. Uh, 14 years old, and uh, Glen Elgin is owned by Diageo, and they are a um, Speyside distillery. <clears throat> and this particular offering is uh, Glen Elgin, 2007, aged 14 years, bottled exclusively for the Society and Norfolk Whiskey Group, Norfolk, Massachusetts. It was distilled on May 1st, 2007, and bottled on May 20th, 2021. It is matured in a hogshead, cask number 800300, and this happens to be bottle 201 out of a total of 254 casks, and it comes in at a nice 53.3% ABV. Um, as far as the hogshead, and there's no mention of whether it was uh, a sherry hogshead or a bourbon, uh, bourbon, you know, ex-bourbon hogshead. Um, so there could be some sherry, sherry residual in there, but looking at the color, I would say minimal if anything um, that's just my opinion on it um, okay on the nose we're going to talk about the elephant in the room here <laughs> i really enjoy this so we're just going to get that right right out of the way um, this is a unique cask offering um, it's uh, very interesting and complex but a caveat on the nose uh, even after being open for a while um, you are going to get a cider vinegar note um, it can be subtle to somewhat prominent upon first pouring. Um, as I've said in previous videos, it being wintertime here in New England, um, most of my bottles are stored in the basement. Um, I recommend, you know, if you're going to be drinking a bottle, um, bring it up into your living area where it can warm up to room temperature a little bit. Warm up your glass. But if you insist on keep it, keeping the bottle in the cellar, pour it in the glass and let it warm up upstairs, you know, by the fire or wherever you want to sit. Let it warm up for at least 14 minutes, you know, a minute, a minute in the glass for every year in the cask or even longer. Do you really want it to really warm up and open up? And once that happens, that cider vinegar note dissipates okay and on the nose you're going to be left with a a waxy candle note similar to that of a klein leash also um a little bit of uh Mm, definitely candle wax, fruitiness, 
starts to permeate okay all right this is a complex dram there's a lot going on in here so we're going to run through the tasting notes upon hitting the palate it's got a really nice mouthfeel a nice mouth coating juicy fruit burst of flavors this takes water very well um, I enjoy it straight out of the bottle at cash strength but um, if you're pouring yourself an average average dram um, you could easily put upwards of a tablespoon of water in here and you're still gonna be fine okay on the palate Mouth coating, creamy, rose petals, a little bit of peach, grapefruit, tropical, tropical fruits, a bit of melon, a, sl a very slight sour note, but it's, it's part of the bouquet. So picture you have a bouquet of flowers, okay? And one of the flowers is grapefruit. The other flower is peach. The other one is jalapeno. The other one is spearmint. Um, a, a black licorice stick is in there. A little bit of anise. Um, it also has uh, one of those flowers from the bouquet would be a slight, a slight, bitter astringentness um, all combined in a bouquet um, a lovely bouquet, bouquet um, masterful really um, if you ask me um, the finish is a medium to medium kind of long it's not a long finish but medi a medium plus finish Towards the end of that finish, I get honeycomb, like from a beehive, raw honeycomb. Um, and then, when the glass is empty, and I, I love smelling the, uh, the 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 fresh the freshly emptied glass. This is not empty, obviously, but from previous experience, the empty glass you actually get a, a a soap, like a bar soap, like a dial bar soap um, smell, um, more jalapeno. Yeah, more jalapeno and soap, honeycomb, beehive honeycomb on the on the very end of that. But overall, um, this is a, a juicy fruit bouquet um, with stabs of, like I said, jalapeno and anise and mint um, going on. It's overall it's a sweet uh creamy not overly sweet but a sweet creamy fruity um experience which um has elements of something like a glencadam 15 and elements of klein leash 14 in here and there's also another offering by norfolk wine and spirits um that is um, another Glen Elgin. It's independent bottling through Whiskey Base, believe it or not. And it's the Whiskey Base Archives collection. And they act as an independent bottling. And they have a release of Glen Elgin, a 12 year old single cask. And I have not tried that one yet, but the feedback I've heard from that release, it's 
stunning and very fruity and a very impressive dram with um, no hint of that vinegar note. So for you sleuths out there, I'm curious as to what would make that that cider vinegar note on the nose come out because even when you open this bottle even after it's gone down when you first take a whiff that's one of the first things you're going to smell but by no means at all really um, is this sour or off-putting at all um, but i'm curious as to what would cause that that cider vinegar note on the nose um, it's more prominent on the nose, but after this opens up, it dissipates completely on the palate. Okay, um, how would I score and rate this? I'm very impressed with this. Um, this retails for about a, a hundred and thirty dollars, I believe, right around there. Um, not taking price into the equation. This is a solid, I like to give ranges, between an 88 and a 90. So I would average this out and say it's a solid 89. Um, but any, on any particular day, depending on your mood and the palate and, and how much you've let it warm up, this could easily uh, be a 90. And if you want to rush it and it could be as low as an 88 but we're talking a b plus a solid b plus uh a minus whiskey here um so i hope you enjoyed today's re review if you did please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe and remember no matter how good it is or how much it costs it's just whiskey folks so hats off to you all and take care